what's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the brand new Kioxia Xeria Plus G2. This is a portable 2TB SSD powerhouse designed for creators, gamers and anyone who needs fast, reliable external storage on the go. And we are also checking out the Xeria Plus G4 PCIe 5.0 NVMe SSD, which promises absolutely insane speeds for desktops and laptops. So lots to uncover, so let's jump straight in. Roll the intro. All right, now let's quickly talk price. The Xeria Plus G2 can be picked up from £42 for the 500 gigabyte variant, £61 for one terabyte, and the two terabyte version, which I have here, will cost you £94. Now the Xeria Plus G4 comes in two variants, one terabyte or two terabyte, which I have here, and the prices are £104 or £172. And these are the current Amazon prices at the time of shooting this video. Now, before we talk performance, an important question, who is Kioxia? Well, Kioxia isn't a random storage brand. This is the company that invented NAND flash memory. Fun fact, the SSD tech we rely on today actually started in 1987 when Dr. Masuoka at Toshiba invented NAND flash memory. Toshiba memory later rebranded to Kioxia. So when we talk about modern NVMe drives, it all started right here. Their technology is everywhere inside laptops, desktops, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, game consoles, camera memory cards, automotive systems, and cloud servers, data centers, and the list goes on. Basically, if it stores data, there is a chance that Kioxia NAND is inside it. So the Xeria G2 portable SSD and the Xeria Plus G4 NVMe doesn't just use any flash. They use Kioxia's own Bix 3D NAND, which is known for reliability, endurance, and consistent long-term performance. So this foundation alone gives you a level of trust that you don't often get with budget SSDs. All right, now let's talk design and build. Starting off with the Xeria Plus G2 portable, and it comes with both cables, Type-A to Type-C, and you get a Type-C to Type-C. Now the portable SSD itself has a clean, minimal, and premium aluminum design. It's compact, lightweight, and easily fits in your pocket or camera bag. Because it's metal, it naturally helps with passive heat dissipation, allowing the SSD to maintain stable performance even during large transfers. So no loud fans, no bulky casing, just a simple, efficient enclosure. So you have a single port on there, USB-C, that's USB 3.2 Gen 2. It is backward compatible with USB 3.0 and 2.0. It works with Windows, Mac, Android, PlayStation, Xbox, TVs, and lots more. You even get encryption support and drop resistance, depending on your region. And the NVMe Xeria Plus G4 comes with a user manual and the SSD itself. That's a PCIe 5.0 NVMe SSD, and this is the two terabyte version. Um, it looks like a regular NVMe SSD, but of course this one supports massive read and write speeds, which we are going to be testing a little bit later in the video. Now let's talk about specs and performance. Now the G2 Portable offers around 1050 megabytes per second read and around 1000 megabytes per second write. This is an NVMe level performance, but it's significantly faster than traditional hard drives or standard USB flash drives. And we'll be doing a real time performance test a little bit later in the video. Now the G4 PCIe 5 NVMe SSD, maximum read speeds up to 10,000 megabytes per second. So blazing fast read speeds, super high write speeds, reduced latency, faster access for heavy workflows. And because Kioxia manufactures their own NAND, the G4 SSD combines Bix flash and custom controllers for stability and reliability under long workloads. All right, so now it's time to test these out. So I've just installed the Plus G4 NVMe SSD into a mini PC. And in case you're wondering, this is the Herc Orion 1 mini PC. 
powered by the AMD Ryzen 9. So we have a one terabyte Kingston already installed. That is a PCIe 4.0 card. This board only supports up to PCIe 4.0. I've stuck this in anyway, because it is backward compatible. And we'll do benchmarks on both of these to see uh, the difference between them. So mini PC is powered up. Both drives are connected and powered on. NVMe has been installed internally and the G2 portable is right here. So we're gonna run a number of tests. The first one I wanna do is a, co a simple copy test. So here is Marvel Spider-Man 2 game files. You can see it's 87.9 gigabytes in total. So that's on the C drive right now, the internal one terabyte NVMe SSD. So we're gonna copy it straight to the G4 first of all and see how long it takes. So I'm transferring nearly 90 gigabytes from the main C drive to the new NVMe and it finished in around 30 seconds with a consistent transfer speed of roughly 2.6 gigabytes per second. And yes, I sped this part up 2x so you don't get bored watching files fly across the screen. So that was a file transfer speed for the G4. Now the G2 portable, let's do the same test. So this time, transferring the same 90 gigabyte folder to the G2 portable SSD took around two minutes. The speed was holding steady at roughly 630 megabytes per second, which means it didn't quite hit the full 1000 megabytes per second mark, but it did max out what this USB 3.2 Gen 2 port can realistically deliver in real world use. And for an external drive, that's exactly what you should expect. Now we're going to go on to some real benchmarks. So start off with Crystal Disk and we're starting off with the G2 Portable. So here are the results for Crystal Disk Mark for the G2 Portable Drive. All right, and here are the results for the NVMe. So it's running at full speed based on a 4.0 drive, but this is a 5.0 drive, so it's working on backward compatibility. If this was working at PCI 5.0 speeds, the, the first reading there would be between 10 to 12 gigabytes per second. Now, just for the sake of comparison, I'm also going to benchmark the uh, C drive. So it's a Kingston NVMe SSD, one terabyte. So let's give that a quick spin as well. And here are the results for the internal C drive. It's achieved much lower scores than the G4 NVMe. So we're actually getting much faster speeds from the new drive. Okay, so now we're going to run AS SSD benchmarks to show the real world cache free performance. So starting off with the G2 portable first. So here are the results of this benchmark test. So what do the numbers mean? So this is exactly the speed of USB 3.2 Gen 2. Um, it's usually up to 10 gigabytes per second, but for this external drive, um, this is the maximum real world performance you can expect. It goes up to a thousand megabytes per second, according to the box as well, quite close, 873 megabytes per second. So running a 4K file, this is what read and write speeds you can achieve. This is multi-thread performance for running small 4K video files, and that is the read and write speeds you can expect. Access time is basically the latency, and you can see we've got excellent results there. So very good responsiveness. And the final score we've achieved is 987, which is perfectly normal for a USB SSD drive. Okay, now we're gonna to switch to the internal NVMe and we're gonna start the test again. And here are the results for the G4 NVMe SSD. You can see impressive results and the test finished much quicker. Now these speeds are perfect for an NVMe Gen 4, um, at the higher end of what they can do. And you've got your multi-thread over here, impressive speeds. These results being fast game loading, smooth multitasking, and overall high performance. Now the access time, the response time, this is how long it takes for your SSD to res respond. And you can see these values are excellent, indicating very fast OS responsiveness, quick app launches, low system delays, the overall score 9409. So this is a strong score for a mid high end PCIe 4.0 NVMe. Now, if you install this same drive into a PCIe 5.0 compatible motherboard, then you can achieve up to 13,000 plus score. So 9,409 with downward compatibility to PCIe 4.0 is still achieving a very, very respectful score. Now, and just for comparative reasons, the C drive, the internal NVMe, let's just test that as well while we're here. Here are the results for the Kingston NVMe internal C drive, and you can see we achieved a total score of 5634. So the G4 NVMe achieves a much higher score. Okay, one more benchmark we're gonna do is the Atto Disk Benchmark. This benchmark shows performance consistency across different file sizes. 
So we're going to run it on the G2 Portable first of all. So here are the results. So the Atto benchmark shows performance at different file sizes from 512 bytes to 64 megabyte blocks. Small blocks speed is very low. This is normal. Tiny file transfers are always slow even on NVMe. The medium blocks 8 KB to 128 KB speed increases significantly. You can see the read and write speeds are between 200 and 750 megabytes per second. So this is the SSD warming up and transfer data more efficiently the large box which is the large blocks 256 KB all the way to 64 megabytes this is the most important part the maximum speeds are up to 950 megabytes per second read and write so this is exactly the maximum performance of USB 3.2 Gen 2 so this confirms that we are using the G2 portable external SSD at its full speed now let's run this test again with the G4 all right, and here are the results for the G4 NVMe. And you can see we're achieving amazing speeds here. Read and write speeds up to 6.5 gigabits per second. So it looks like we are achieving full speed Gen 4 speeds, stable performance across all blocks, no thermal throttling, no PCIe lane issues. Everything is working perfectly. Now, Keoxia also include their SSD utility management software, giving you drive health status, temperature monitoring, firmware updates, secure arrays features, trim management, and performance tuning. You've got a clean interface, easy to use, and works across their whole SSD lineup. If we talk about heat, thermals, and noise, the portable G2 is completely silent. Metal body helps maintain stable temperatures and minimal heat buildup even during multi 100 gigabyte transfers. Now, if we talk about the internal G4 NVMe, PCIe 5.0 SSDs do run hot. But paired with a motherboard heatsink, the drive remains cool enough to sustain long workloads without noticeable throttling. Now, use cases. The portable G2 SSD is perfect for YouTubers and videographers, photographers, students, Android phone expansion, Steam Deck and gaming handhelds. You can use this as a PS4 or PS5 external storage. You can use it for your work files, backups or 4K media on the go. The internal G4 NVMe is perfect for PC enthusiasts, heavy gamers, video editors, 3D artists, programmers, or anyone needing ultra fast OS and project performance. So there you have it guys, the latest offerings from Keoxia. And after using these for over a week, here are my pros and cons. Starting off with the portable G2 SSD. So you're getting very good real world transfer speeds, portable, lightweight, and durable. Reliable Bix Flash, good heat control, works across all devices, and affordable pricing. Now, the caveats, it's not as fast as Thunderbolt SSDs. Now, the pros and cons for the G4 NVMe. So you're getting PCIe 5.0 speed improvements. It's great for heavy workflows, strong thermal performance, high endurance, and great value for the speed. You strictly need a motherboard with PCIe 5.0 NVMe support and it does require decent cooling because they do run hot. So bottom line, the Keoxia Xeria Plus G2 portable SSD is one of the most reliable and stable portable drives you can buy today. It's compact and fast enough for professional workflows and backed by a brand that literally helped invent NAND flash. And the Xeria Plus G4 PCIe 5.0 NVMe SSD, that's a beast. It unlocks next level speeds for content creators, gamers, and PC enthusiasts who want the best performance without breaking the bank. Keoxia as a brand has a huge advantage. They design, manufacture, and optimize their own flash chips. And that technology is inside nearly every digital product we rely on daily, from phones to laptops, to cars, to data centers, and beyond. If you need reliable storage from a brand that shapes the industry, both of these drives are absolutely worth considering. That's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews and videos, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.